let's talk a little more about Season 8 of Adventurers League. Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about a few items again on Adventures League, make a couple of corrections, um, and see what we're really looking at here. One of the first things I want to talk about, um, let's talk about treasure. And I've kind of been thinking about who's going to get screwed over the hardest by these treasure changes. And one of the, well, let's be honest, let's talk about what we're looking at. Right now, as it is, if you go into a room, you find armor, weapons, things like that that would be upgrades or maybe better for your players. Like, let's say you've got a paladin and you happen to find some plate armor. Um, you can take that, maybe take another weapon that you've wanted, and use it. Under the Season 8 changes, your guy can, or girl, can put the plate armor on and use it during that session. But you better carry your existing armor because at the end of the session, it'll turn to dust and you'll be now be a nudist because you can't keep mundane items that you find. So, I mean, that's going to be problematic because people have always looked forward to, oh, wow, we found plate. I don't have to buy it. I can uh, put this on, use it, and I've got a better armor class. At this point, it's good for a session turns to dust, and then you're screwed. And like I said, you better be carrying all of your other equipment. And because you have to carry all of your old equipment, you also better be tracking your weight to see if you're encumbered and change your speed and everything else. Uh, I mean, it's just going to screw people over who need new armor if they find it or anything like that. Now, another one that's really going to get hosed over are people like wizards. It's always been... One of the things wizards look forward to are finding things like spell books, scrolls, things like that. Um, now, if you find scrolls, they're considered consumable items. They'll be given to somebody, but again, it's consumable. But wizards have always liked finding scrolls for spells that they can use, but they don't have in their spell list because they can copy it. Now, what's going to be problematic, let's say level one through four players, you can't get and keep gold that's found in a module anymore or in a hardcover. Let's say you find a room that's got a couple thousand pieces of gold. You would normally split that up between your party. Everybody's now got some extra gold. Um, a wizard also found, let's say, two spell scrolls at level two that they don't have that they want to put into their spell book to have options to prepare those spells. So under the new rules, yes, you can do it, but no, you won't be able to. And I'll tell you why. From level 1 through 4, every time you level, you get 75 gold pieces. That's not in addition to found gold. Found gold turns to dust, just like your other mundane items. You don't get to mark down and keep found gold, gems, things like that. It's gone. It doesn't exist. You're basically working for a salary. Now, those two level two scrolls you want to copy, they're going to cost you 50 gold pieces per level, as normal, plus four hours of your time. So that's 100 gold pieces per scroll. You're screwed. You're probably not going to have the gold because the other thing that spellcasters have to spend their gold on are things like components for spells. And if those components um, happen to be ones that are used when you cast a spell, you have to continually be able to buy it. And found gold has always been the source that wizards use for that. But since we're now stripping people of found gold, you're not going to be able to buy components. You're not going to be able to afford to buy inks that you need to transpose scrolls. Let's say you find a spell book with a ton of stuff. You're just totally hosed. You, you know, you're know, you going to have to wait until you're really higher level because they start giving you a little more gold. It's, what, um, 150 gold from levels 5 to 10. Woohoo! 550 at uh, 11 through 16 and 5,500 at 17 to 20. The fact that you're not keeping gold, those are your sources of gold that you need for your components and everything else, and you're never going to have enough. So it's, I mean, it's beyond stupid and it's really screwing people over it's another one of these things that 
I don't know that they, I don't think they thought it out. I mean, sometimes I don't think we've got the brightest lights on the tree that are uh, making these rules up for Adventures League because this is beyond stupid. Let's talk about advancement points. So thinking about like my example group I gave that took two years to complete Horde of the Dragon Queen, um, and then they were moving into Tiamat. In that two-year period, let's say that they, the DM was nice every week. They gave them, during the two hours of play, they gave them the full two advancement points. Now, this table really did dick around. If it was my table, I wouldn't have given them full advancement points for every hour because they went off res. They didn't do anything that advanced the story. And there are weeks that they probably wouldn't have gotten any. But let's, this DM is nice, and he probably would have given them their advancement points every week. All right, so levels 1 through 5, you need 4 advancement points to get to those levels, or 2 through 5. So we're talking about every 2 weeks, you're leveling. At the end of 2 months, they're level 5. Now, with 2 years being taken for this book, that leaves 20 months. And... From level, once you're level 5, everything from that point requires 8 advancement points. So, 8 advancement points, 2 hours of play each week, that's 1 month per level. They would have hit level 20, what, at roughly uh, month 22, and they would not be able to play Rise of Tiamat because they've tiered out of that book. Um, Horde of the Dragon Queen was, what, level 1 through 7, and then Tiamat was 8 through 17, I believe, something like that. So the fact that they're over level 17, they've tiered out, and they can't complete the adventure because they were slow play. Um, they might have been able to complete the adventure and not tiered out if they slowed advancement to half speed after they got to, uh, what, level 5, or decided all of a sudden that they, they realized during Horde that they were just going to tier out and not be able to complete the second book. Um, but I mean, it's, it's not well thought out. These people played for two years in, in that book and they were level appropriate when they got to Rise of Tiamat because they used the experience point system. Now the experience point system is not a failed system. The problem with experience points has been inexperienced DMs not knowing if you have a table of seven how to level up adventures that are made for four to five people. And so there's all, you always see this complaint, we, we, every week we don't get enough XP to level, blah, blah, blah. It's not the adventure, it's the DM not scaling the encounters in the book. Um, and even if Let's say that you have a table that plays fast. It's possible. Here's, here's the, here, here, there, are a couple of, there are a lot of problems with the advancement system they're going to do now, but this is another problem I see. Let's say you've got fast tables, because there are fast tables. They complete adventures in an incredible amount of time. They find ways to skip things and all this other stuff. Um, but they will usually still get enough XP to be at the appropriate level by the time they get to the final boss. Under the new system, the fast table is not going to be level appropriate because it's based on time instead of XP. And so they're going to be under leveled by the time they get to that final boss. And it's going to be a problem. Now, people are going to argue well, if that's the case, they should just go play Expeditions modules. Let's be brutally honest, blunt, and unkind here. There's this thing that people have called a life. And I'm going, to, I'm going to be blunt here. A lot of the people that come to our two-hour uh, Adventures League sessions on Wednesdays, these are the only days, and that's the only amount of time that they can dedicate to playing D&D because they have kids, they have families, they have school, they have things they have to do on Saturday and Sunday, either with their kids or family, school or whatever, and they don't want to spend all of their spare time playing D&D. They have a life. And to sit here and say, well, play more D&D &D in order to level up and be able to be level appropriate for that final boss, um, that's bullshit. The books as they're written 
provide enough experience points to be able to make it to the final boss and be level appropriate if you play every session. If you don't, you know, it's understandable. We always have one or two people that are maybe a level behind or something at the table because things come up. I've got somebody at my table that every two weeks, they've got planning and zoning meetings because they work for the city. And they're always a little behind because of this. But it's to be expected. Everyone else is level appropriate. And it always works itself out. Now, I can't tell this person who has children, a job, a lot of responsibilities, well, if you want to be level appropriate, you got to come on the weekends and spend all of your time playing D&D. That's bullshit. Number one, if the only thing you do in your spare time, it's, it's probably not unhealthy if you're just playing D&D and sitting at a table. Um, I, I'm the kind of person I advocate getting out and doing other things. And, you know, I love D&D. I've played it for over four decades, but it's not the only thing in my life. And I would never, ever expect people to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to dedicate all my time, free time, screw my family, screw my wife. Um, I'm not going to miss getting to the proper level. And really, that's what this new system is going to expect. Um, hardcovers, adventures, they all give enough XP. Going away from XP is going to screw people on both sides. Slow groups are going to get screwed because they're going to level ahead and not be able to move into the next book. And fast groups are going to get screwed because they may not, like I said, a large majority of the people that I see on Wednesdays, that is their day. That's their day to game. You know, if it's, oh, my wife only lets me come out one day a week. Hey, that's your family. That's how it works. I'm not going to tell them how to do your fucking family because that's between them. They have things that they do together. Uh, they have kids. I can't tell them. Screw going to your kids' games. Screw spending time with your kids. Come play D&D. It's bullshit. So by getting rid of the XP system, we're going to screw over people on both sides. The people that have a life and can't play more than a day a week. And the people who are slow and are going to end up going out of adventures and not being able to move to a second book in a multi-adventure system. Like the new thing coming up for... Um, Season 8, it's a level 1 through 5, the first book. Those slow groups, they're going to level out of that. They just are. And here's the other thing. I mean, I think they're releasing the book like three months apart. Those slow, group, slow groups are definitely not going to be level 5 by the time they need to be at the end of the adventure. And they may well level out of the next adventure because these aren't going to be high-level adventures. I think they're only going to like it's 1 through 5 and 6 through 10 or 11. So that slow group is screwed. They can't play the second book. Um, yeah, people are going to say, well, they need to play faster. That's their play style. And I thought that was the whole point of this whole thing. If you read Xanathar's, oh, it caters to people's play styles. No, it doesn't. It's not catering to the slow player. It's not catering to the fast player. It's not catering to anyone. It's bullshit. So the advancement points are absolutely ridiculous. A lot of people are going to get screwed over. And it makes no sense to change to it. Experience points have always worked. They still work. If you have DMs, let's say you're the coordinator, you have DMs that don't know how to scale, teach them. It's extremely simple. And if you don't know how to, you shouldn't be coordinating. Now, let's move on to factions. And there was one error I made regarding factions, um, saying that you had to have the faction agent background and not have an existing background. That's partly true. You have several options. If you want to be in a faction, um, you either take the faction agent background, which is in, I think, Sword Coast, um, instead of a normal background, and then you can be a member of a faction. Or... You can take the faction background option, replace your background option that's in a normal background with the faction background option, and still continue. So you're kind of a noble, you're kind of a criminal, but you don't get the stuff that comes with being a criminal. You'll get the skills, but that background option below the, the flavor text and things, you don't get that. You have to be the faction agent. Um, now let's talk about why they did this. The... There are two reasons, and neither of these are good reasons. One, the Rad War. 
And if you don't know what the Red War is, that was a lot of BS that took place on Facebook where a roleplay group said, we're going to declare war on the Red Wizards. So a couple of factions joined in. Then you had other factions that are like, we're going to join the Red Wizards. We like what they're doing. And they did all this RP, and they tried to get the AL admins involved because they wanted to have a module written about this nonsense. So they wrote an epic. And the result of the epic is, if you're a faction agent, you cannot go into certain cities. Mallmaster, you can't go there as a fac if, you have, if you're in a faction. You'll be put to death. Um, so what does this mean? If you want to be in a faction, there are going to be things that you cannot play because you're in a faction. Um, you're going to not have modules you'll be able to play if they take place in these cities. You're not going to have things that you can gain because you can't go where you need to go to gain them. All because people chose to try to interject stuff that the admins and the writers had no intention of putting into the game. To be honest, I think that they're punishing people for doing something stupid. And it goes back to, in my opinion, this is, this is, this is the end result of you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And deal with it. Now, the other thing or other reason that I believe they're doing this, they took advantage of it to nullify factions from play. It used to be you had it, got renown and you could get a magic item from your faction. And because of their stupid treasure point system, they don't want another source, source of magic items in the game. So they're eliminating that source by eliminating factions from play. Now, I don't know if you're aware, people want to be lawful evil. You've always had to be a member of either Zentarum or Lord's Alliance. Um, so here's the thing. If you want to be able to play in everything and be a lawful evil character, you can't do that. So if you want to play in something and maybe go play a module where you're going to Mallmaster, you can't go as a faction member. You are not going to be allowed to go in the city and do the things you need to do. So they are really making it also so that if you want to have your options open where you can play anything you want after Season 8 begins, you will not be able to be Lawful Evil. Now, I don't really have a problem with that because most people that come in and play Lawful Evil, they play Lawful Douche or Lawful Stupid. Um, you know, it's like they have no clue that being Lawful Evil doesn't mean you have to be a heinous asshole 100% of the time. They play like a total jackass. Um, a, a, a good evil player is a very rare thing. And I don't mean they play good. I mean they play well. Someone that plays evil well is an extremely rare thing. Most of them play like jackasses. And it usually ends up that what they're doing is playing chaotic or neutral evil. And if they... And they're always disruptive when they do this. So it ends up that people are getting annoyed. I have to talk to them. And it comes down to, look, if you keep this crap up, I'm flipping you to neutral evil. It's going to be, because it's disruptive, you need to roll a new character. Don't play evil again, because if you're going to continue doing that, I'm just going to ban you. I can't have disruptive people at the table. But I think, you know, maybe they're trying to get rid of the evil players. But I doubt it. Um... They just made it so that the people who chose to be evil and in a faction, probably a lot of these were in this Red War stuff, so they're getting bitch slapped too, and they're not going to be able to play their lawful evil characters anymore and be in a faction. So they're going to have to choose. I either am able to play everything, or I get rid of my alignment and my faction, change to a more normal alignment, and don't play the way I've been playing. And... I'm sure some people are going to quit over this, and honestly, I don't care. It's the rules. Yes, they're stupid, but getting rid of most of these evil characters I've run into is not going to be a bad thing. But those are the two reasons. You've got the Red Wars, and I believe this is just punishment for people having the nerve to interject into how the game was being written and what their idea moving forward was. And it was also to get rid of that source of an additional magic item in the game that they didn't want because they've made the treasure point system so that we're going to be flooded with magic items. And it's just going to be ridiculous. But uh, 
those are the additional things I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, treasure, people are getting screwed over. Advancement points, people are getting screwed over. And with factions, people are getting screwed over. Um, it, this is definitely the season of screwing people over. But that's it for today. Let me know your opinions. Um, the uh, Are you going to run Adventures League? Are you going to ignore the rules? And here's the thing. You're going to have to let everyone know that sits at your table, if you're not going to use the rules, that they will never be able to play those characters at a convention because it will not be legal. If you don't log, you don't have your advancement points, um, you don't show where your treasures come from, the treasure points, the treasure's not legal or on the banned list, that kind of stuff. Um, they can't play a cons. They've got to have everything 100% legal. So what are you going to do? Are you going to not play Adventures League legal, have players that can't play a cons anymore? Are you going to play Adventures League? Or are you just going to quit altogether, go to homebrew? What are you going to do and how are you going to handle it? And what are your opinions of these moronic changes? But let me know down below. That's it for today. And remember to rate, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time. Bye.